Hello, my name is Mariana Danilovich, and I'm with Hollywood Portfolio, and here with Tom Morgan of Net2TV Company. We're at Digital Hollywood Spring 2012, and Tom's going to tell me a little bit about the company and okay. tell us a little bit about uh, where they're going with this concept. Okay. Well, Net2TV is uh, an emerging cloud television company aimed at supporting free ad-supported television to smart devices to smart TVs. Um, as one of our partners, one of the CE companies said that they learned one thing about smart television, the one thing that's missing from smart television is television. <laughs> that, that really is the killer app uh, from a connected device kind of play. So instead of just focusing on the app store, the idea is with a lot of new interest in long form advertiser supported television, how do you actually make it easy for a person to uh, actually discover the channel, make it linear, but I call it synthetic linear because it looks and smells like linear, but it has start over and on demand and you know, like really high quality. But when you bring home your smart TV from Walmart or Costco, there's actually television when you turn on the Wi Fi. Uh, and it's not, it's below the premium, it's down in the advertising supported area. Um, and that's really the uh, area we're focused on. Fantastic. And, um, here at Digital Hollywood, um, I think you, you are probably uh, here today. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you found were kind of fascinating and new and interesting? The, the interesting part is is the emergence of a new class of publisher and programmer. I call them programmers. You know, publishing is where I come from print a long, long time ago, and programming is, is what you watch when you watch TV, so that's my focus. Um, as the traditional uh, pay television networks really move up into the paywall, um, the standard bundle of services, as virtual MSOs come online, as they will next year, um, this new emergence of a new programmer, whether it was, I thought it was a real interesting discussion with the, with the uh, I'm going to say his name wrong, but the gentleman who uh, was the producer for CSI about a whole new cybercrime television program entirely different. I thought it was really interesting. You're starting to see the create the creativity of this time really start to engage. That, that's very important. In terms of multiple platforms, engagement, and the creativity of storyline behind it. Yeah, that. though, though I'm, I'm intrigued by storyline lengths and durations because as you move, um, length of programming is directly correlated to the size of screen. So as you move from phone to tablets, and the tablet revolution is very much engaged. Then as you move to the big 60 inch that are at Costco and everything else, um, I think the consumer is expecting a full storytelling experience or a full information experience. Um, I don't think they want to work. I, I, I think the biggest criteria for knowing that you're watching TV is not whether you have a remote in one hand, but that you have a beer or a glass of wine in the other. Because you're, you're wound down for the day, prime time is the period that I want to be entertained or informed. I want to work at it. So understanding how to program it that way. Anything else you'd like to share with our viewers about where digital media, um, what's happened with digital media this last year? Or so? Well, I, I, I actually spent a year working on a virtual MSO with a large international company, and I can tell you that the concept of, you know, people talk about cord cutting, I don't really worry about that, but the idea that true, full on TV everywhere in the truest sense, based linear television and on-demand television and functionality will come to these connected devices. Uh, it may come from some of the traditional players um, as some of the you know, telcos and the rest look at expanding. I think the world of television is about to just go upside down in some very interesting ways over the next 12 to 24 months, maybe you know, three years. We'll probably have a conversation here in the fall about it and be amazed that it hasn't happened sooner. You know, as always, and, and, but, but it, this is the inflection point. I was around AOL when it first started getting going, and you can see it being consumer driven. And you've always looked for that consumer driven kind of experience. But this is consumer driven. Um, and it's not just 18 to 24 year olds doing droids and tech. It's, you know, the Roku customer base is much more a video file, traditional television market. So it's, it's, it's through all aspects. It's consumers knowing what they can get yeah. and then driving it. Right? That's right. And you know, the television programming paradigm isn't broken. It's just where they want access, how they want control, uh, a better uh, ad load, uh, which I think is very possible. Uh, that's where I spend most of my career. So I think that's, that's also the encouragement. You can do more with less in this world. That, that, that's helps. That helps.
Yeah, yeah, and it make more run, make more engaging, make more responses. So there's a lot more. It's a very, very encouraging landscape. It's, it's a good time for us it's a good time. being in this business Absolutely. for a few Absolutely. I years. haven't had this much fun in a long time. That's good. Well, thank you so much for sharing that sure, with us and with our viewers. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you, Tom. All right. <laughs> okay. As you do.